You went to university, you know what I mean? And when what when when did you take to the like go to university when you were deciding to do this DJ? I started DJing like a year and a half before finishing my BA. I knew I wouldn't study well I I, I would finish my BA in cinema, but I, I knew I wouldn't do any cinema anymore. I just finished because you know I respect my parents and stuff like that. But I knew I knew the music was gonna be it. So after I finished the BA I was like, okay, thank you. Let's DJ now, you know? Speaking about the music being it, okay, you are here, you're deciding to do this, uh, this career, and what was the music like when you started, and what have you come to? Like, because a lot of DJs start hip hop, then they end up house, or they start disco, or they end up electronica. What did you start before ending into this area? To be honest, uh, my sound was more like trend, you know, but that lasted about four months. It was like techno trend. But back then, the trend, it's not like the trend now. It was more like DJ Midja type of trend. So it was very tribal, very techno. After four months, I discovered the first real techno tunes, and I'm like, okay, that's it. So it I always has been techno because of my drummer background. So I'm very much into classic stuff, you know? Not melodies and build-ups, but just for classic techno, so. so. How do you get so lucky to be hooked up with Moonshine? Well, is it luck? I don't know if it's luck. Um, they heard me while I was playing with Carl uh, Cox in uh, uh, Velvet Underground in London two years ago. They liked it. They said, well, call you. They did. Send me a contract, you know, build the contract, and then we signed last year. They don't do that very often, you know. Okay, cool. I don't know, actually. I, I, that's, that's good. Yeah. If I heard Carl Cox right off the bat, as soon as he heard you, immediately wanted to meet you, and bang, you know, and everything started happening from then. Yeah, it was really quick. Oh, it's that's nice. So as a female DJ, who are you looking at, you know, like who are you looking at DJing as a female when you were getting into this business? Honestly, I wasn't really looking, I, I don't see music as being something that you have to put in gender. So I was not seeing, oh, this female DJ or this male DJ, I was just seeing like, I like this DJ and I, I like these DJs less, you know. You have to watch the women, you know it was hard getting into this business. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did see the first woman DJ I saw was Miss Marilyn, but she's not a DJ anymore, you know, but she used to be, you know, five years ago. So she was coming often to Montreal, and I was like, wow, that's wicked. Yes, okay, there is one woman that made me realize that being a woman DJ exists, and that's her. But not that I wanted to, you know, be like her or anything like that, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, boy, you knew you wanted to do this no matter what. I think so, yeah. Well, let's talk about quickly Relentless Beat yeah? from Relentless Records or from Moonshine, right? Yeah, that's right. How's that going and when did that come out? Relentless Music is my label that's going since two years. Relentlessmusic.com, you can go and see all the info over there. And uh, I just decided to give the same name to Moonshine because uh, to give more exposure to my label. So. Okay. Hey, you gotta check her out. Miss Tress Barbara from Relentless Records, Relentless Beat. Oh, we're gonna have a relentless time right here. <laughs> all right, big it up, everybody! Mistress Barbara right here on EP. 